Davis and I am the artisan residence for June at the Arlington Public Library. I just wanted to introduce myself, tell you a little bit about me, and then tell you a little bit about my favorite art material. So I got my undergraduate degree in graphic design in California in 2011 at San Jose State University. And while I was in my undergraduacy, I took a glass class, which is kind of an unusual thing to do in a college. I just happened to fall into it. A friend introduced me to the class and I took it and I was hooked. So after getting my undergraduate degree, I moved out here to Texas to take uh, classes at the University of Texas at Arlington, which has a really fabulous glass program. And so I decided to go for my master's degree and then graduated with my master's in 2014 at UTA and now I teach there. So I'm still in the area. I teach at UTA as well as a glass studio in Fort Worth, Texas called Seneca Studios. And if you are interested in playing with glass, there are a number of studios in this area that I would be happy to tell you about, and I will include those at the end of this video. So for this video today, I'm going to talk about three different areas of glass making. Glass is a very broad field, and so we have way more than just three, but I'm going to cover three today because the three that I'm going to cover are going to be the most common in uh, most studios where you might find glass. And so we will go over the hot shop, which is working with the glass in its molten state uh, in a hot studio. We will go over flame working, which is working with the glass in front of a torch, as well as kiln forming which is where you can work with the glass cold and then you put it into a kiln and you can melt it down into a project. So let's talk a little bit about the kiln studio first. The Kiln Studio is a studio in which you can cut glass down, manipulate it cold, and then put it into a kiln to melt it down. So the clip I'm showing you right here is a clip of me prepping for the Arlington Library Workshop, the one that was a scratch tile platter um, where we did a little bit of graffito. And so I'm cutting the glass down by using a glass cutter. You can see a couple of them on the on my right side, that blue handled one that I just picked up and the pink handled one. Both of those are glass cutters. These tools are actually accessible through the hardware store if you ever need to cut glass down. The glass that I'm using is a specialty glass for fusing. It's from the Bullseye Glass Factory in Portland, Oregon, and it's actually meant for this process. So not all glass is created equal. I'm cutting into this bullseye glass because it melts down really, really well. And it also doesn't give us any, it doesn't give us too many problems in the kiln when we melt it down. So I'm using the glass cutter to score the glass. What that is doing is it's putting a weak point in the glass. And then I'm using the breaking plier to bend and break the glass along that score line. For the workshop at the library, I actually had to go in after cutting the glass and coat each tile with a glass specific paint. This is a high temperature paint that we use in the kilns. So you can also put glass together by cutting it down and assembling it into a pattern as you see me doing here, and then put that into a kiln itself. In this clip, I'm making a bowl. In the kiln studio, we do have to also prep the kilns for using them. And so we have these ceramic shelves that we use to put glass on. You can see in this clip, I'm scraping off some of the old material that was on the shelves, and then I coat them with a fresh coat of shelf primer, which is meant to stop the glass from sticking to the shelves.
The next step after prepping the kilns and finishing a project is very carefully loading them into the kiln. So this does take a little bit of practice, but making sure that you don't distort the project. So those of you who took the class with me remembered that we used a specific glue to hold all the pieces together. And it is very important to use a glue that is meant for the kiln. So we used a little bit of glue to hold the project together. And then I transported it back to the studio and then proceeded to load the projects in and adjust, of course, adju making any adjustments for anything that might have shifted during transport. Now that we've got our project finished, the next step is to close the kiln and then program it. So the kilns we use are electric kilns and they run on digital controllers, which means that we can control the speed at which the kiln rises in temperature, we can control the temperature that the glass hits, and then we can also control the slow cooling down of the glass, which is called annealing. And so we have to do this for glass because glass is pretty temperamental and it doesn't really like being heated up very quickly or cooled down very fast either. And so we've got to control the temperature very, very carefully so that the glass projects don't crack. After about 16 hours or so, I check the temperature of the kiln to make sure it's at room temperature and then it's ready to open. These were some of the sun catchers that we made during my time at the Arlington Library. Welcome to the Seneca Studios Flame Working Studio. This is the studio in Fort Worth that I mentioned that I work at. And I do flame work and I have flame worked before, but it's certainly not my main area of focus in glass. And so I decided to grab this little clip from a demonstration um, that I had filmed of Nick demonstrating his flame working skills. So Nick is our flame working instructor, Nick Gomez. He works with borosilicate glass on a torch. So he's very, very familiar with this process and does it very well. In the studio, we work with a couple of different types of glass. So we work with borosilicate glass, which is a very hard glass, which means that it is less prone to thermal shock, which in a sense means that it's not gonna break very easily if you heat it up too quickly or you cool it down too fast. Now, every glass has its breaking point, uh, but borosilicate is pretty resistant to thermal shock. So that's the type of glass that Nick works with. It's great for sculpting, and uh, he does a lot of detail work with that glass. The other glass that we use in the studio is a soft glass, which is actually the glass that Nick is using in this video. So the glass that Nick is using melts very at a very, very low temperature. It comes in a variety of colors and it's super soft and easy to work with. So we tend to make beads out of this glass. A lot of bead makers use the soft glass to melt down and shape and add details and things like that, mostly because of the color range that this glass offers. So just like the kiln studio that we talked about earlier, once Nick is done heating, melting, shaping, adding his detail, you can see in this clip he's making an eye that's similar to what is hanging around his neck. And so once he's done with his process, the glass then goes into an annealer, which is basically a hot oven similar to a kiln so that the glass can cool down overnight very slowly. The last studio I would like to show you is the glass blowing studio. This is our studio at UT Arlington. The heart of most glass blowing studios is the furnace. 
We keep the glass in its molten state around 2100 degrees all the time, which makes it easy to gather clear glass out of the furnace on steel rods and pipes. Around 2100 degrees, when the glass comes right out of the furnace, the consistency is very, very similar to honey. In the hot studio, we use a variety of tools. I'm gonna to show you some of them, but this is one of my favorites. This is just regular newspaper that's been soaked in water, and you can use it to shape the glass. Because glass blowers can't put their hands directly on the glass, they've gotta use tools. These are some of the tools that we use. These are the diamond shears, a set of shears, a set of tweezers, and the jacks. A lot of people also ask us about color. We buy our glass color from color manufacturers who melt the color down and then crush it up or melt it down into rods. As you can see here in this clip, we've got a variety of sizes of crushed glass called frit. So here's a short clip of me working at a bench. I'm inflating the glass using a blow hose that is stuck in my mouth and attached to the end of the pipe. That allows me to inflate the glass as I'm working it. I'm also using the jacks in this clip. So the jacks are being used to create a constriction called a jack line, which is gonna help me later to break the glass free from the blowpipe. Just like in the flame working studio, once a piece is done in here, it goes into an annealer to cool down slowly so it doesn't crack. So that's all I've got for you today. Hopefully this video was inspiring and encouraged you to try glass making. I do want to take this opportunity to just thank the Arlington Public Library for including me in this program. I've had such a blast and I also wanted to thank Sharon and Leslie for all of their help in organizing the classes. So thank you again for watching. Hopefully I'll see you at a local glass making studio soon.